All right. Hello, everybody. This is James Stanley with Daily Effects. Just wanted to do a quick sound check. So if you can hear my voice, please type in a Y. <laughs> Scott Clarkson typing in the whole word Y. Uh, but it looks like we have uh, plenty other Ys coming through. So it looks like we are loud and clear, good to go from the majority of the room at the least. And I just want to say thank you very much for your time in advance. I wish I had more to tell you as an update from last week, but... There's still a lot of congestion that's out there. Um, here we are now in the second half of April, and FX markets are still showing much of the mean reversion that's been commonplace now for a few months. But with that being said, we have started to see some movement in some key commodity markets, uh, specifically speaking of gold, which set a fresh 2019 low earlier this morning. Making that a bit more interesting is the fact that the U.S. dollar hasn't really done much at all. I mean, we're still mired within that that uh, ascending triangle formation. And as of earlier this morning, prices were struggling at the 97 level in DXY, um, indicating that we are seeing some selling in gold that isn't directly related to the U.S. dollar. Well, we're going to unpack that as well as quite a few more themes today. Um, I have about 12 markets that I wanted to look at, but as usual, this webinar is all about you. Setups you have or pairs you want to take a look at, go ahead and fire those my way. I will do my absolute best to answer or look at as many of those as I can when we get to the Q&A portion of today's webinar. Need to go through a risk disclaimer first and foremost, which is here. I'm going to leave that up for about 15 seconds, and then we'll get right onto the live chart, start looking at some setups, deriving some strategy. Hey, Mr. O'Keefe, looking at the uh, Kiwi dollar. Yes, sir. I have that one on the radar today. And Vinny says, I'm a little confused with the in cross breakouts. Hmm. Yeah, it's in a pretty strange spot. Uh, Euro yen flexed up, found some resistance at a pretty key level. Uh, pound yen is still shying away from that Fibonacci level at 147.04. Uh, dollar yen, dollar yen appears to be, you know, particularly precarious spot right now. But let's go ahead and get onto the live charts and start dicing these up market by market, piece by piece. Just getting uh, my screen set here so that I have zero distractions around that chart. And there we go. All right, so first and foremost, wanted to start out here with the U.S. dollar, and as I learned to say in Texas, it's doing a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> um, so the ascending triangle formation, it's still there. We haven't seen any attempted breaks on either side. Uh, if we focus in on April price action, it's really been fairly lackluster. I mean, there has been a gyration with a general theme of weakness, like I could drill down to a four-hour chart here. There you go. And you can see that high that we punched up to on the second day of the new quarter. Hold the support at the 97 level. That led into a lower high. Penetrated below the 97 level. And we started to see resistance form off this 97.21 to 97.30 area. That was a prior area of support. It gave us a bit of short-term resistance last week. But at this point, it really feels like we're setting we're trading around that no man's or woman's land, right? We broke below that support area, and you can even see we're around that 96.80, around 96.85 areas where buyers are trying to make a stand. And, and so far today, that stand has worked. Prices are beginning to angle back up above that 97 handle. Although with that being said, I, I don't have enough confidence in the short-term move here to be able to start plotting for short side or bearish scenarios directly off of this chart. Um, about the best that I would have, and I would have to fill in a little bit here, uh, meaning a little bit of projection. We had this lower low coming after a fresh lower high. If we could see a hold of resistance below that 97.21 marker that, that caught last week's swing highs, then perhaps I could keep that door open for a deeper downside move towards 96.68 or 96.47. 96.47 is the longer term levels that, longer term level uh, that I'm going to continue to stay I don't want to say bullish, but rather vigilant around uh, the U.S. dollar width. Um, that was a level that had given us a prior swing low back here in late March. It's a long-term Fibonacci level. It's the 23.6% retracement of this major move, taking the 2011 bottom up to the 2016-2017 top. 
And there's 96.47. Notice how it helped to catch the Q3 swing high. Came in here to cut off a number of these candlestick bodies on a weekly chart, leading all the way into Q2 of 2019. So if we get back down there, that's where I think some position strategies might start to come back into favor. Uh, until then, I think the modus operandi is not to get caught in the noise, not to get caught in the chop. Now, with that being said, there are some dollar pairs that are showing a bit more of a distinct trend. Um, now, before we move on, just want to point out a couple of levels of, of relevance here. Uh, for resistance, I'm looking at that 97.20 to 97.31 level. Underneath, 96.68 brings some support potential. This is a prior swing high. Plotted through as resistance a couple of different times. Uh, 96.47, and if we do break below that, then the trend line that makes up the bottom portion of this ascending triangle, that's going to come back into play. I currently have that projecting around 96.09. But as you can see on the inflection that we had after FOMC in March, I mean, this isn't like a hard set area of support. We could see a bit of penetration followed by a bounce. And I could still consider that a support hold off of the trend line. So as usual, we want to line up setups on either side of this matter. This one's going to still be rather non-deterministic because there's a setup on literally both sides of this thing at the moment. And this is Euro dollar. We want to start off with a short-term look first and foremost. And this is a bear flag formation, taking the bearish trend that started after the March FOMC rate decision, basically where prices in Euro dollar traversed the entirety of the range from resistance down to support in a little over a week. Now, after that support bounce came in in the opening days of April, notice this bullish channel has started to build and remains I'm still holding. Uh, at this stage, I could draw Fibonacci retracement around that bearish move. There we go. And notice that it's the 50% marker of that prior bearish move that's currently helping to hold resistance. But you could also see the support side of this is catching support at prior resistance at the 38.2% retracement of that prior major move. So taking a step back, traders could look for a resistance hold at the 50 fib around 113.15, looking for prices to break through the bottom side of that bullish channel to eventually test the 1250 level. Remember that prior swing low that we had just last week? followed by a retest of the big picture support zone uh, that I have between 111.87 up to 112.12. On a shorter term basis, like I said, there's still a case to be made for bullish continuation, looking for a hold of support at prior resistance around the 38.2% retracement, looking for price to test above resistance at that 50% marker and an eventual move towards 13.47. Now we can take a step back and that plot will thicken yet again because the multi-month range in Euro dollar, it still remains. We saw another support test late March, early April. Bears were unable to break through. Not only were they unable to break through, they were even unable to test that prior low at 1175. So we did get a higher low sense of support in the opening days of Q2 that has since held. So incorporating that longer term look, that would be more of a bullish backdrop. So very short term, off say like a two hour chart, bullish strategies could still be favored. Taking a step back to look at the intermediate term, the four hour, bearish strategies could be favored. Looking for a bear flag break after a 50% retracement hold. And then going even further back, the view could go back to the bullish side, looking for that range that's been in play now for a little over five months to continue. I see a lot of questions on gold. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get gold. I want to get these FX pairs first. After Euro dollar, I'm pretty much going to fly through pretty quickly, and then we'll get right onto gold. All right, so give me one second. I'm going to drop this in the chat box for anybody that might be so interested. This is uh, FX setups of the week where I shared how I'm looking at, at the euro dollar. Uh, my view is to look higher until this thing actually starts to reverse. Give me a quick second. I'll put this link in the chat box for anybody so interested. There we go.
Now the area or the point with which I'm gonna say price is reversed, the bearish trends come back in favor is a break below that 1250 area. But we could also incorporate that 23.6% Fibonacci retracement it runs around 1245. So I'm gonna look at this little five pip zone as the support level that needs to hold to retain bullish qualities in the pair. If we break back below, I'm looking for prices to get back into that deeper support zone and perhaps even pose a downside break at some point. Now, like I said last week, I don't think that we have the drivers in the headlines at this point, at least that could allow for that downside break. So we're gonna look for some exogenous shock or it's likely gonna take some exogenous shock for that breakout to finally take place. Cause keep in mind that long-term range has been building in the Euro dollar. I mean, through a variety of drivers, we had a near existential crisis that had propelled prices down into this zone in the first place with the debt standoff between uh, Rome and Brussels last year. Cooler heads prevailed, the ECB announced a stimulus exit that even gave a quick pop of strength to the Euro. And then they announced a re-entry into stimulus in March. So, I mean, through all of these really big events, that range has continued to hold. I think it's gonna take something really big to push prices outside of that area. All right, like I said, I'm gonna move a bit quicker on these next few pairs because the way I see it, these setups are largely just technical in nature. Uh, cable. So I looked at the short side of this and FX setups of the week for this week. Uh, the polar opposite of what I was looking at the week before. Week before, I was looking for a support hold in this big zone. Rose between 29.62 up to 130. Prices ran all the way up to the Fibonacci level at 131.17. And notice how that's now caught like a week of resistance. We first started to, to toy with that level last Tuesday. Another test here on, uh, that was Wednesday. Another test on Friday. Another test yesterday. And buyers were just unable to break through that 3117 level. So at this point, it looks like we're going to get, or we soon may get, a revisit down to the 130 psychological support. At this stage, I'm still open to buying if we do see support hold within the zone, particularly if we see support respect this pattern of higher lows that's been developing. Notice here in late March, we got around 2977. Opening days of April, we got around 2985. And both of those are above the early March swing low around 29.62. If we continue that relationship of lower highs with probes around 130, and I still like the backdrop for continued reversal or, or retracement setups. Uh, bigger picture or longer term, I do think that the favor is to the downside, uh, particularly once the support zone gives way. And I think this inextricably is linked to that US dollar setup that we looked at a moment ago where prices are remaining in the ascending triangle. It just looks like we might have to wait a month or two for that top side break. It's the polar opposite where I want to see here in pound dollar, where I'm expecting this digestion to continue until one of those exogenous shock factors shows up. Maybe it's around Brexit, where that breakout could actually begin to fill in. Uh, but I need to see prices go sub 29.62 before I can start plotting for such. Uh, but at this stage, the watch is on for another support hit in that zone see if buyers might be able to come back into the table. All right, dollar cat. I'm gonna keep this one really quick because basically we just have a return to resistance. I'm gonna start off with a daily, work our way down. All right, there we go. So we were looking at this last week, this big chunky zone of resistance in dollar cad. And I have another depiction of that on this chart right here. We can take a step back, look at the weekly. There we go. And these are a couple of long-term levels that are helping to form this high. Right in here, 34.63, and then a little inside of that, just uh, inside of 34.50. So that's the long-term backdrop that has helped dollar CAD build into a series of lower highs, so respect of the March swing high. That's going to become relevant when we go into this chart because we can see what's helping to form those lower swing highs late March, early April. All right, go down to a four hour chart and I'm basically just gonna extend this resistance zone down here. Now setting a top price action, there's a couple of these swings that could be problematic, especially for stop placement on short side positions or, or for mean reversion type of strategies. Um, but this is essentially where the trader could choose how aggressive they wanna work the position. Uh, if I wanna keep risk relatively tight, I could look just outside of that 34 psychological level 
keep stops just above there. And that'll allow a smaller distance that I need to factor in for initial profit targets to the point where if I'm able to fit in, say, inside of 3405, taking on just about 50 pips of risk, given current prices, I'd really just need prices to float down about 3315 to look for a 1-1 one -one on the initial piece, at which point I could move stop to break even and then look for a deeper move down towards that 3250 level that I was looking for. Coming into this week, that was the same level that helped establish this mid-March swing low. Now, I don't know how aggressive I would want to be past or beyond 3250. If we scroll out, notice there's that bullish trend line right down here. I'm using the main points of connection from the October low into the February, uh, into the early and late February swing lows. But I wouldn't want to stay too aggressively short on a retest of that trend line. So in essence, kind of like cable, I'd basically be looking to play continued digestion until it actually begins to break, until it shows some some willingness to get out of that some willingness to get out of that prior range. All right, give me one second. Is that a USB issue with my mouse? And the last thing I want to use is a trackpad. Test, test, test. All right, there we go. All right, so it looks like trackpad is going to be it because my mouse has just stopped working, but that's okay. Luckily, I'm adept at that. All right, dollar yen. Oh, and before we move on, dollar cad, I'm looking short until we finally see this batch of resistance broken. Uh, and there's a couple of these swing highs, as I mentioned, 34.50, a bit higher, 34.70. And then above that, we have 35. And so just scrolling back to that longer term chart, I think this is one of the reasons that we are seeing uh, buyers get trepidatious as we tip back up towards the 34 area. Okay, I have uh, one person telling me that I went into echo mode. Is everybody still able to hear? Okay, give me one second. All right, let's try that. Are we still getting an echo? All right, awesome, awesome, awesome. Hey, thank you folks, I apologize for that. Uh, if there was anything that I said during the echo that you didn't get and you would like a recap of, just let me know. I'd be happy to go back over. Uh... <laughs> I'd be happy to go back over anything that, uh, that, that might have been missed during that technical mishap. Okay, let's move on to dollar yen. All right, this is the one I want to go with. Okay, so dollar yen put in a profuse topside breakout last week, and, and that followed a a quick test of a key support zone. That key support zone, uh, we looked at last, well, not last Thursday, but the Thursday before that, between 110.75, 110.86. That 11086 level is particularly interesting. This is the 61.8% Fibonacci retracement of this major move. Taking the November 2017 swing high down to the March 2018 swing low. Now, the reason that I look at that as a good and these are the types of relative terms I try to avoid, but as a good Fibonacci retracement, is because 2019 price action has had a lot of engagement with each of those levels. Uh, for example, the 23.6, and I mean, this came in the midst of some madness around the open of the new year. Like, if you remember that, yin, that, that surge of yin strength that showed up on like the second trading day of the year, a lot of people were calling it a flash crash. Notice this candle body opened at 107.5. This thing flexed all the way down below 105. Notice that's all extended wick right in there as prices were trading through that level, but caught a pretty big bounce throughout the session, 250 pit bounce. Sorry, the open of that candle was all the way up here. That was the close indicating that 250 pit bounce. But after the fact, I mean, sellers went in for another round and notice they were thwarted right at that 23.6. And then the day after, we opened up around the 23.6 and it was like buyers said, okay, well, it's time to go. 
Prices worked right back up to the 38.2108.47. We're done with that level yet. Bit of short-term support, follow-through resistance. And then finally, prices are able to launch up and retest the 50% mark over that same retracement. Buyers are going nowhere really fast throughout the rest of January. And then prices pull right back to that 38.2 retracement, catch support of prior resistance, and then work right back up into the resistance zone. And then the 618 comes into play. That's at 110.86. Now 110.86. Gets a support inflection in early March. Prices return back down to the 50. And then we retest the 618 right in there. Now, the whole point in this exercise isn't to get you to buy a Fibonacci retracement. It's to point out the fact that we have what could be a very imposing level very nearby at 112.34. That's the 76.4% retracement of that same major move. Perhaps more importantly than that, and not just theoretical, is the fact that this is the same level that helped to set swing low support for like a month before dollar yen started to put in those semblances of breakdown in late December, early January. That's a big, big level. Now, last week's topside breakout ran all the way up to prior resistance around 112. And notice we've seen a considerable amount of grind at that level so far this week. Buyers haven't pulled back. But sellers, they've shown up enough to stop these folks dead in their tracks. So in this week's FX setups, I didn't want to chase a fresh breakout. Instead, I wanted to look for prices to pull back. We've already started to test the top side of my S1 zone that I have, and it's a rather large S1 zone, between 111.50 up to 111.82. I have an S2 zone of interest right down here, 111.13 to 111.28. Below that, 110.75 to 110.86 remains workable. Now, if we don't hold support above that level, then I want to let prices go back down to 110 to see what might happen next. But at this stage, this is about the most that I'll do in trying to chase a breakout that has already taken place or a breakout that has already happened. We already put in that breakout. Bulls have shied away as what could be a really big level lurks just above. I think this thing, it may need to pull back a bit more before buyers are ready to ultimately encounter that 112.34 level. But Vinny's question earlier in the webinar is the reason that I wanted to really harp on this one, because there has been a modality change, a very significant one over the past week, because prices went from a support test into a profuse bullish trend into range. I think the reason that range is developed is because of an imposing resistance level not too far above. And I think that's playing out into both Euro Yen and Pound Yen as both of those pairs were putting in similar themes last week. There's the breakout that we had in Euro Yen. Prices flexed all the way up to that. I think this is a monthly swing high. Yeah, it's a monthly swing high. Because before that, we had the 127.50 inflection. But that comes in at 126.80. And that's why I don't like using a trackpad versus an actual mouse. Um, but nonetheless, uh, if we do get prices in, in Euro Yen pulling back, there is support potential right within this little chasm between the 764 and 786 retracements. Runs between around 126.05 to 126.12. But more attractively, uh, if support shows here at the 618 retracement that was prior resistance, 125.59, that could reopen the door for bullish topside strategy. Stops below the swing that penetrated below 125, then look for prices to revert back towards 126.80 and then maybe even 127.50. The 27.2% extension of this recent major move, taking the late March low, uh, we're taking the, the late March swing high down to the late March low is all the way up here at 127.65. So that to me feels like a pretty attractive area to look for top side ultimate or final targets between that 127.50 level up to that 27.2% extension. Euro yen, pound yen, got something there too. That 147.04 level strikes again. Um, so at the very least, and I think, 
that with analysis, it's sometimes this way uh, where you just got to use this, the, the information that you do have. But we know where resistance is. Resistance is coming off that 147.04 level, the 618 retracement of a, a longer term major move. Going here on the weekly chart, is this one in green? Taking the 2011 low, drawing that up to the 2015 high. 147.04, but you'll notice this isn't the first time this level has been in play in pound yen. I mean, it's all the way back in 2017. It helped set a double bottom coming into 2018. All right, there we go. So at this stage, I know where resistance is. I don't like proximity to resistance to open the door for short side positions because if I'm going to look to get a stop above this swing that had uh, saw that resistance inflection, it means I'm going to have to take on like 100 to 110 pips of risk. Meaning I would need to see a reprint at 145 just to justify a 1-1 risk reward ratio or an approximate 1-1 risk, risk reward ratio. And that would require a break below this trend line projection in here. Now, I don't think a 145 reprint is out of the question, but it's also not something that I yet want to bet on. More interesting to me is watching for price to trickle back down into this support zone. Uh, by this zone, I mean it could be 145.79, 145 and a half, or even 145 flat. At which point I can then start looking for mean reversion price to return back towards 147.04. Likely, I would be looking for initial targets uh, inside of that. It's like 146 and a half. And then maybe a secondary target just, just at 147.01 or something like that. All right, Swissy. We're getting into the danger zone. Or actually, we are in the danger zone. Now, the name of the game is to watch for the inflection. Okay, so... Uh, let's start off shorter, work our way longer. All right, so it has been a rip-roaring rally in Swissy. And this has been going on for a few weeks now. I mean, we went from a, what was a pretty hard bearish theme into a pretty heavy bullish theme. And if we revert back to that USD chart or even the Euro dollar chart, neither of those are indicating anything as severe as what we're seeing here. Um, by severe, I mean uh, anything is clearly directional. Now, if we scroll back and put some scope into the move, it begins to make a little bit more sense. Uh, maybe not with that chart because that's just showing straight rip in one direction, but that chart right there. Where what we in essence have is a continued case of mean reversion. A big zone of resistance lurks just above. This is the zone that we just started to test that runs between 10071 up to 10096. Same zone that caught an inflection here in July of last year. Turned around an aggressive bullish advance. September, October of last year. I mean, that was a, a really strong advance from that 95.50 low, right? Very clear directional type of move. Uh, this zone hold another held another advance in early February, then again early March, and now we're right back into that area. Now, if we scroll out longer term, look at like a weekly chart, similar to that dollar CAD setup. I think we have a good idea as to why there's been a penchant for sellers. Uh, to show up here while also seeing some um, uh, seeing a slowdown in in, in, in in buying pressure. And that's been because just scrolling back over the last two years, there has been only a handful of instances where prices have tested beyond this zone. Now, this isn't to preclude any future such events, but it does paint for some pretty attractive probabilities here. Uh, so at this stage, the name of the game is seeing if we could catch or trying to catch a top. As in, if we do start to see prices reversing, indicating that we have a nearby swing high just inside of that prior March swing high, then the door is open for a parity retest and maybe even a retest of that 99.02 Fibonacci level. Uh, same Fibonacci study that's related to the 764 and the 786 that helps to demarcate this zone. Now, we did get prices peaking out of that area in March. So a bit of subjectivity is going to be required here. As in, prices may test beyond that 10096 level. Uh, the key for me is making sure or seeing that sellers respect these prior two swing highs at 10125 and then 10119. As long as that happens, 
then I can move forward better with a, a, a case for reversals, looking for prices to test back down towards that parity level. But for right now, the train is on the tracks and it's coming through. I don't want to stand in the way until it at least shows a sign of slowing down. If that happens, then I can look to fade this move. Okay, going to go into range town for the next couple of pairs. Aussie dollar. So we started to test that top side zone. It was between 71.86, 70, oh, excuse me, 71.85 to 72.06. Uh, at this stage, we haven't yet seen the short side of the range beginning to fill in, but this is the exciting time uh, because you can see where we had this quick bounce from that 71.50 area that's fallen short of a retest of those highs. So the item of excitement is whether or not sellers continue to defend this ground above 71.85. If we do see that swing high from yesterday or from Friday continuing to hold, then the viability of that longer term range remains right in here. And then we can start looking for the short side of that theme to begin filling in. But I believe Karan had asked me last week about trading uh, gold proxies through Aussie. This is a good reason as to why one wouldn't want to do that. Because while Aussie is relatively strong moving up for that resistance test, gold prices fresh 2019 lows today, which we're going to look at here in just a couple of markets. Uh, Kiwi dollar. I still like this one to the long side. Uh, last week, that basis was largely taken from the uh, the Fibonacci level of 67.17, same Fibonacci level that helped to hold the late January and mid-February swings. Also been at work here so far in April. Going down a little bit tighter. There you go. Uh, two hour, that's what I wanted. See where we tested below that line on Thursday? Bounce back up, first swing high. Now the big question is whether or not buyers are going to be able to support that low. But a continued hold or a continued show of respect at that 67.17 Fibonacci level keeps the door for top side looking for prices to revert back towards that 68.20 Fibonacci level. All right, that's what I have in currency land. Gold. All right, so there's a big test going on right now. At least to my mind, uh, the big test is 1275.55. That is a big level. And I'm going to go to this cleaner chart to illustrate as to why. So this is the low, the swing low from August. And I'm drawing that up to the swing high from mid-February. The 38.2% Fibonacci retracement is at that 1275.55 level. But this is also around an area of prior support. 1276 up to 1286. There's another FIB level at 1286. We'll look at it here in a moment. But if we get a hold of this 38.2% Fibonacci retracement, we could have a markedly different picture than if we have a daily close below. Now, if we have a daily close below this zone of support, This formation is going to look nearly as attractive. The fact that this move has started to price in, even when the US dollar hasn't been doing much, may be offering a bit of foreshadowing, but at the very least, it does set a relatively high bar for gold strength or strength in gold prices to come back. Now, with that being said, the way that this thing closes today is going to be very key. If I do see a daily close above this 38.2% Fibonacci retracement, then I'm, I could consider today's tests below as a failed test from bears to break out. That could keep the door open for top side, looking for prices to revert back towards 1286, maybe even towards 1300. At this point, we still have the descending trend line, and that currently projects to around that 1300 level. Alternatively, if we do have a close below that level, below the 1275.55 level, indicating that bears are gaining greater control of near-term price action, I don't want to just chase it. I need to get a better entry or, at the very least, a slightly better outlay with risk to be able to justify short-side continuation of that theme. Now, one area of possible support is at this 1280.50 level. This was the area or the price that it set support 
during the descending triangle formation that was building that we looked at last week. A bit higher, the top side of that prior support zone, 1286.38, is another Fibonacci level of interest. So if prices pull back, break above 1280.50, you could even look at short side continuation with the resistance fill right there at 1286.38. Now, there's another reason that I'm somewhat trepidatious of chasing this thing lower at this point. And that's because I have little expectation that USD buyers are going to be willing to, at this point at least, break through 97.50, retest 97.71, and then break beyond that. For the big picture breakdown in gold prices, I want to get at least some idea that this ascending triangle in, U in, uh, in the US dollar is, is getting closer to filling in. We don't have that yet, and I'm expecting the dollar to continue meandering within this formation until there is a reason for buyers or for bulls to push through. I don't think it's going to be a Fed-led move. I think, if anything, this might come from some element or some bout of risk aversion. And I know that might seem neither here nor there, given where we're at on equities right now. Like, if you look at the S&P 500, here we are tearing away, moving back towards that all-time high. But there's some thickness in the backdrop here as well. Like, for instance, if we throw on, say, like RSI daily chart, you'll see that thing has been diverging pretty hard for a while now. I mean, we first got overbought RSI like seven weeks ago. Prices have been grinding higher. RSI still diverging. And we're in earnings season. So there's ample motive for folks to push directional moves in stocks. So, as I said earlier, we're looking for some exogenous shock factors to break some of these ranges, whether it be the US dollar, whether it be the Euro. They may be there. Those exogenous shock factors, they may be on the calendar. We just don't know what they are yet. Black swans will rarely call to let you know they're coming in advance. For now, I'm going to look to trade mean reversion and digestion until there's some element of signal that it's nearing its end. Uh, oh, going back to gold. So as I wrote this morning, there's literally a case on either side of this thing. Uh, the daily close is going to be a big determinant of which of those sides is going to remain most attractive. Uh, if we do get that daily close below support, then the descending triangle breakdown is going to appear as attractive. Like I said, I don't want to chase it. So if anything, I want to let it pull back to try to find resistance to one of these short-term supports. Alternatively, if we do get prices holding a daily close above 1275.55, then the door can remain open for bullish strategies. Look for prices to move back towards that 1300 level. But I'd likely want to take profits a bit earlier than that. Uh, on the short side of the move, if prices do continue running lower, 1260 spot 08 is one of the next stops that I'm looking for, but 1250 is the bigger area that I feel better about. Uh, that does have the 50% retracement of that same major move that we looked at a little earlier, the August to February major move. And there's also a couple of longer term Fibonacci's, uh, Fibonacci levels that come in a very close proximity of that zone, making it a, a very confluent area to be following. Uh, oil, got some oil as well. I had written the forecast for us, uh, the technical forecast for us in oil this week. Give me one moment. All right, I'm going to put this in the chat box for anybody so interested. All right, uh, so oil, huge bullish move last week, but I mean, it was really just one big day of price action, and then the rest of the week was pretty much meander. Uh, the big day of price action came in on Monday. So a Friday breakout ran into Monday. Prices ran all the way towards that 65 handle and pulled up just a little bit short. I think this is uh, this is one of the moves where I really try not to overthink it. We have a real strong bullish trend. We have a prior area of resistance taken from a key Fibonacci level at 62.84. And so in this week's forecast, I wanted to see some element of support show up in this zone, which has started to, given a mild bounce that we've had so far today. Um, the big trouble level for me is, is 65. 
and I'd even written that in the forecast. Um, it's not necessarily that I think we're going to get a certain tweet at that level, but once we're dealing with fresh eyes, especially in a market that's so widely followed as oil, those psychological price points could be especially telling. Um, like for instance, it was when we first started across 60, the turbulence started to show uh, back here in March. I say turbulence, it was like a week and a half of pause before bulls just continued breaking on through. But I think that 65 level is another reason for pause. Um, so I think profit targets or, or target strategy should be done with that in mind. Looking at the closer we get to 65, the harder it is for this thing to going to, uh, for this thing to continue driving higher. And so like 64.10 might be a good initial target, 64.50 a second target, and then maybe even 64.70 as a tertiary target. And then if we can blow through 64.89 and then 65, great. But if we don't, at least you've scaled out and got paid for your trouble. All right, and last and most certainly not least, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So this thing put in a real nice support bounce earlier this month. Uh, earlier this month, they published an article pointing out this exact zone of support. And I tweeted this last week. I even had a couple of folks try to uh, tell me, I think it was like, I think they said it was in a bear flag or something like that. I didn't see any formation of that nature. What I did see is a good hold of a decent support zone that runs between 2607, 26067 up to 26110. That's led into a fresh 2019 high. Price testing at 265. Now pulling back. Um, the next support zone that I have, it's a bit tighter, 26302 up to 26351. Um, you can see where we already saw this come into play very short term yesterday. And that led into a quick bounce, but I'd be willing to accept even a dig below that low, provided we stay within that zone for higher low bullish continuation strategies. That's what I got. I want to see what kind of questions ladies and gentlemen have. Let me know anything trading related. Uh, for Mr. William O'Keefe, we have a descending wedge on Kiwi Dollar four hour chart. Let me take a quick look. I had it in a symmetrical wedge, but that had already broken down. Let's see, you're looking at H4. I'm not seeing him, buddy. Yeah, the most recent digestion setup that I had here in Kiwi was the symmetrical wedge um, that it held into April trade. We started to gyrate below that, but we know where that support's coming from right in there. Uh, from Ryan Dyson, would you enter short at current levels in palladium? Palladium is one of the few, one of the few commodity markets that I don't touch at all. Um, so sorry, I don't have a good answer for you, Ryan. Let me take a quick look. I might be able to chart something up though. Hmm, maybe that maybe I should be following the chart on this. Nothing there. I bet there's a 14.4 in there somewhere. No, not quite. There we go. Found it. So that's the reason that we're getting current support. It's off the 23.6% Fibonacci retracement of the 16 to 19 major move. See that here in green. Yeah, just gonna work the chart a little bit tighter. All right, well, you know, there's a descending triangle in here. I didn't see one in uh, in Kiwi, but you know, there's there's something going on in here.
Oh uh, yeah, this could be a this could be a good setup. Uh, I would not be entering short at current levels. I mean, if anything, I'd be basing up longs or trying to. Um, okay, so it's not quite a descending triangle because I don't have a great level of horizontal resistance. We did get a lower low in here. This also wouldn't be enough for me to call this like a falling wedge. You know, like if I do a trend line from those lows, so can't quite. Can't quite set that up either. But the reason that I would be looking at this more from a bullish perspective is just taking a step back. I mean, that's a really, really built in long term trend. And we've caught a pretty textbook pullback so far to that 23.6% Fibonacci retracement. The reason I wanted to point out that not great falling wedge is to highlight the difference between a descending triangle and a falling wedge. A falling wedge is usually going to be uh, 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 focused on for bullish reversals. And the reason is because we're not getting the same type of action at the lows as we're getting at the highs, right? As in these bears are getting more and more aggressive at the highs, right? But if this was a legitimate breakdown scenario, shouldn't they be just as excited to sell at or around the lows? I mean, at the very least, it should give us a parallel, like a channel, right? But it didn't. We are seeing the continued presence of buyers coming in to hold up the lows, even though it is a technical lower low. I'm just gonna differentiate that color so it sticks out. But we're not getting that same response at the lows. So, you know, that's about the spot or the area that I'd wanna say, okay, well, we have a build of support. There's, you know, some reason that buyers are coming in out of the woodworks to hold the lows, even after a pretty precipitous decline. And so that might be where I'd start looking for bullish reversals on a 23.6% retracement hold of support. Uh, Mr. Vinny Palma, sorry, I was mainly referring to Aussie Yen as a failed upside break. Maybe. It's a good question. Give me a second. Let's see what we got. No, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily look at this as a failed breakout yet. It's still holding the line, you know? Let me see if I could find it as a failure from any other perspectives. Yeah, I mean, here's what I'd say. If this thing launches up to 81 or maybe even 82, that would be like the cleanest breakout pullback in the history of breakout pullbacks. Um. You know, we were looking at this resistance zone, 79.86, excuse me, 79.68 up to 80 flat. Support zone, 77.50 up to 77.75. We broke the 80 big fig with that Friday rally. Prices pulled back just inside of that and have since held. So, no, I mean, I think you caught that breakout pretty clean. Um, I wouldn't invalidate it. I mean, I wouldn't be able to invalidate it until it, until it fell back below 79. But it is it is eerie when you get one of those breakouts where it's like, all right, I broke out. Now what? I'm just going to sit there and do nothing. But it hasn't failed yet because we basically have just pulled back to find support prior resistance. No reason to lose hope yet. All right, I'm gonna have to run a bit quicker because I only have around 10 minutes. <laughs> William O'Keefe says on the mouse, James, always have a backup. Oh, I do, literally sitting right next to me. And it's a better mouse. My backup here is actually better than my prime one. But um, it's initializing USB ports whilst in the webinar. <laughs> I didn't want to mess up the audio, which is why we had that echo a little bit earlier because I was trying to plug in my backup. Just wouldn't work. Sometimes you just got to go with the cards that they deal with you or the, the cards that they deal to you. Sorry, my text is coming out a lot today. Uh, from Mr. Vinny Palma. Yeah, on Euro Yen, move short stop higher because dollar yen resistance in mine. Not sure it'll work, but what the heck for an everything small size portfolio right now. Thanks loads. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's... It's been especially difficult timing trends in Euro of late. 
I mean, it's been really difficult because, I mean, even a fresh round of QE, it gets us, you know, like one big figure and then a reversal, you know. It's, uh, it's, it's been a peculiar start to 2019 so far. Very peculiar. Uh, Mr. Brian Head, at these gold short entry levels, where would you put stops? Thanks. Yeah, sure. Um, so nearby, very, very nearby. Because, you know, we got to keep in mind, we're not really trading a trend here yet. I mean, at least I'm looking at like the four-hour chart, daily chart, longer-term charts. We're not really trading a trend here yet because we just have that first piece of information that support is beginning to give way. So I want to keep those stops really, really tight. If I'm going to play a pullback to 20 uh, or to 1280 spot 50, I want that stop to be pretty darn close to 1281 or lower. Like ideally, like perfect world. If this was as, as perfect as Vinny's Aussie Yen breakout, prices would come up and just kiss 1280 spot 50, start moving back down so that I could get that stop just right above that prior area of support. Uh, same at 1286.38. I want to give this as very, I want to give this as little of my capital as possible that I have to play for a deeper downside break. Yes, it is a technical trend entry because I'm looking for prices to pull back so I can sell resistance to prior support. But I'm still treating it like a fresh breakout where we haven't made a lot of ground below that 1275 support yet. And so I still have the fear this thing's going to jackknife on me. As a matter of fact, I almost expect it to jackknife on me. So stops on those first couple entries for short side plays are going to be very, very tight. Richard Heath, what do you see on DAX? And I apologize for not having covered this already. It's, uh, it got, got kind of busy over the past few days. So international equities of... I don't want to say fallen off the radar or gotten a little little less love, but um, I haven't been hitting these as often as I should. Okay, yeah, that's the one I wanted. All right, so just starting with a weekly, working at tops down. I mean, we're still in the midst of a really strong topside move. Now, last week, I thought this was going to try to top out around a level of prior uh, at resistance around prior support around that 12K level. So far this week, we haven't had that. Prices have just continued to run higher. Uh, digging down a bit deeper. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't want to buy here, but a pullback to retest support at 12K resistance, that, that could be a workable theme. If I wanted to give it a bit more rope, I could look at stops below 11,850. Be a really wide stop for what I'm usually looking to do. But, you know, given that the next big area of resistance that I have is all the way at 1240, uh, 12,443, I might be able to justify that wider stop of 150 ish points. Yeah, there's another reason for that 12K level to have some interest. That's the 50% marker of the 2018 sell-off in the DAX or right around there. That comes in right there. And it's a prior level of support as well. So yeah, I could get back in the driver's seat for top side, but I'd want to see this thing pull back when I want to chase fresh break. Mr. Vinnie Palma, such a long period on that Aussie yen, uh, such a long range period on that Aussie yen. Okay, you're right, LOL. <laughs> no, it's okay. You got to, uh, everybody has to keep in mind how our uh, our own human psychology works against us with this stuff a lot of the time. As human beings, we have a tendency to feel equal amounts of pain far more than pleasure. That was Daniel Kahneman. That's not me making it up. Um, I believe that was in his book, Blink. May have been uh, Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell, but I'm pretty sure that's Kahneman. Um, but as human beings, we have a tendency to feel pain more than we feel pleasure. So, like, when we get a breakout that, like, meets criteria or points one and two, but doesn't meet with three and four. So, like, one and two here is prices did pull, uh, prices did break out, prices held higher or low support. What they haven't yet done is run up to a fresh eye. It could be easy to look at something like this and say, okay, well, this one didn't work. Well, no, it worked pretty well. And for now, steps one and two are looking about as good as they could, at least without step three. But, yeah, it's a, that was a good hit. It was a good hit. Pent up breakout. Clean break on Friday. Now we just need to see that thing continue to run. 
All right, now I gotta take the last question of the day and we can wind this one down. Oh wow, okay. So lots of questions on oil, lots of questions on CAD, and I, I kind of have this one linked a bit. So let's let's go over this. So dollar CAD, as I'd said, the main push point for me is the build of resistance, and this comes from both longer term and shorter term observations. I had two charts, and that may have muddied the point a bit when I was discussing it earlier. But here in this long term chart. So I'm looking at two Fibonacci retracements, basically taken off the monthly. Uh, retracement one is 02 to 07. And it's the 61.8% retracement that comes in at like 34.45, right around there. And then I have a second retracement that goes from the 2011 low up to the 2015 high. And that 23.6 is at 34.62. Now, if we look at this on like a weekly chart, you can see where the collection of these resistance points has been like bad news for dollar CAD bulls, right? Now, it doesn't mean that we can't trade above there. We had this quick four week spurt back in May of 2017. We even had a quick instance of that in December of last year. But life above 35 has been far harder to come by for dollar CAD than it has below. Now, I think the best comp that I can make for this is Aussie dollar at the 70 big fig, right? Now, this is a very obvious level. A lot of people know why it's there or why it's pulling in buyers or why it's working as support. But like, again, if we just scroll back and look at the long-term nature of this thing, uh, sure, Aussie could trade below 70, but that's the exception more than the rule, right? Like we had a flare during the financial collapse. But after the fact, I mean, it was literally just tests followed by support, tests followed by support, tests followed by support. So to drill this relation home in dollar CAD, we have a similar type of thing taking place at the 35 level. Right in there. That one, that one, the 35 level, right? It's not to say that we can't go above there. There's not like a law in the books, but life above 135, much less common than life below 135. And then if we look at this weekly chart, you can see where we have these piano keys that are just lining up right in here. And that's when I go down to the shorter term chart and I show, okay, well, there's a resistance zone up here too, right? The prior chart we looked at, resistance was here and here. Now this one has a zone of even tighter points of resistance. Heck, I could even show you where that came from. I'm gonna make this one red. I usually make these long-term fibs very thick. So when I'm on a short-term chart, I know where it came from. And there's that 3445, I believe it was. And then we'll take this secondary fib. All right, so now once I go down to like a four hour chart, there you go. I got those additional longer term Fibonacci retracements plotted here. And it's like a danger zone of resistance all the way up for like 100 pips. So I think that's another reason that I want to keep the short side of this move uh, very much front and center until it's invalidated. Um, now, to make this sync with U.S. oil, this is something that I could justify for CAD strength because we have a really strong theme in oil prices where oil is just barreled above the 60 handle we pulled back we found support of prior resistance if we do see a continued support behind the bid that's something that 
could keep CAD relatively strong, thereby making that resistance in dollar CAD even that much more attractive. But that, my friends, is what I have for today. Just want to say thank you so much, everybody, for your time. I will be back on Thursday, so if you have the chance, we'll love to see you back in the room. But uh, thank you so much for the time. Hope you have a fantastic rest of the day. And as always, happy trading, ladies and gentlemen.